Awaiting your verdict on the People's Court case list. A mum who's fed up with her kids treating her like a bank. A row over the right to wear what you'd like to the office. And this mum who's had enough of her son's lies. Lee, I can't take the lies anymore. It's tearing me apart and it has to stop. Mum, I'm here to make amends, but you ain't getting no money. Hello and welcome to the People's Court. We have another three mind-boggling cases up before Judge Jerome today. Two families are being pulled apart by money rows and workmates who disagree over their taste in fashion. Whatever next. First up, we have a mother who threw her teenage son out over a whopping debt. She wants him to pay up so her family can get back together again. Lee, though, he isn't so sure. He wants to move back home or indeed even pay her back. As ever, we want to know your thoughts, so keep those texts coming in. Just send the word court, followed by your message to 63332. Text messages cost 25 pence, plus one message at standard rate. OK, Judge Jerome's ready and waiting. Let's get started. The claimant is Sandra Fordham from Wiltshire. She says her son Lee lies to her constantly and owes her a lot of money, £1,020. A couple of months ago, she decided she'd had enough and threw him out. Sandra wants her son to realise just how much he's hurt her so that the family can get back together. The defendant is 18-year-old Lee Fordham. He says his mum is too strict and doesn't allow him enough freedom. Lee does want to settle the row with his mum, but doesn't see why he should pay the money back. All rise. People's Court is now in session. Judge Jerome Lynch, Your Honour, this case is Sandra Fordham versus Lee Fordham. Both parties appearing before the People's Court have agreed to tell the truth and to abide by the jury's verdict. Sandra, you brought your son here because you say he owes you some money. Um, last year he had a job and I said to him, rather than pay me money that you owe me every week, keep it for our holidays. He said, right. fair enough. Uh, two weeks before our holidays, I asked him if he could get the money out of the bank. He said, yes, I will. He said it for about three days, and then he told me he never had anything in there. What money was it that he was supposed to be saving? It's money for his keep, and also he would borrow money for to go out to drink that night. Yes. And I would put everything down in the diary, which I've got here. What was he supposed to be paying you on a, on a weekly basis? He was paying me £30 a week for right. his £30. Lee, can I just ask you about this? Uh, what happened? Got caught up, just lying, and then I started smoking drugs. Just lied to my mum about uh, obviously the money and all that. Yeah, but why lie, Lee? I'm your gran. Why not? I'm not your mum. I Lee? brought you up since you were a year old. Yeah. Just a second. Um, you call Sandra your mum. She's your grandmother. Yeah, adopted mum, yeah. So she's adopted you from when you were a small child. Is that right? A year old, yeah. A year old. So she's your mum to all intents and purposes, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jackie is your actual mother. Yeah. The money he was supposed to be saving oh, yes, was, was mine. money that was yours. Yes. You just asked him to keep it for That's you. That's right, yeah. So you understood that to be the position, didn't you? Yeah. This was not your money. No. But you spent it. Yeah. Why? I needed the money. What, all of it? Well, not all of it, but I slowly, I slowly used it bit by bit. Over what period of time are we talking about? I don't know, about a month. A month? What, you got through £700 in a month? Drinking, smoking, having a good time with my friends. And as you were drawing these little bits of money out of the bank for yourself, to smoke and drink, you didn't think uh, to your, for a moment that it was money you shouldn't be taking? Yeah, I thought, but at the time I was having a good time. What, it didn't matter? Well, I, no, not to me, no. It it's matter. trouble with you, would not it? You think about yourself, you don't think about other people. I think about my friends as well. My friends are having a good time. But yeah. there again, as I wrote in this letter to you, where's your friends when you haven't got any money? May I see it? Thank you. Thank you. This, you wrote him as a result of him 
spending well, this money? It's another lot of money that he owes me. I wrote him that letter after he'd lied to me, saying that the money was in his bank account. He had £564 go in the bank from him actually finishing his job because he got the sack. And I asked him for my money, for my, his keep money, that he owed me 160 And he said it was in his bank, that he'd lost his bank card. On the Monday, he came round to see me. I said to him, your new, new bank card's come because I could feel it in the envelope. You have a choice, either I take you down to the bank, or we go down, you know, together, or you give me your bank number and let me know. And he turned around, he gave me his number, I went down, it was the wrong number. The next day I saw him, he gave me the right number this time. I went to the bank, I uh, put the number in, and all he had was £3.24 in there. And that was when I wrote that letter saying that, that he's lost his job, sure. his family, and everything else. What, is, uh, is that truly? Did you do that? Yeah. But you've lost your job, yeah. you got 500 and odd pounds, yeah. went into the bank, you drew it out and spent it. And you didn't give anything back to your mother? No. Why? Don't know. What do you don't know? Spend Enjoying all. yourself. Enjoying myself. Again. I thought that I would, uh, I bought, a, bought some, some drugs that I thought that I might be able to make the money back. But that I sounds pretty stupid. I smoked it all. That sounds pretty stupid. Sandra, Lee, I think we're going to take a short break there, all right? Thank you. Okay, perhaps you already know which way you're going to vote. Do you sympathise with the claimant, Sandra? If you do, it's because you think she deserves compensation for the money she claims her son owes her. Then call 090111100001. Or do you feel for the defendant, Lee, when he says he doesn't see why you should pay her back? If you agree, then vote for Lee by calling 090111100002. Calls cost 25 pence from a BT landline. And calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. You can also vote by text. Send C for claimant Sandra or D for defendant Lee to 87654. There's a lot more to run on this one, so stay with us. Welcome back. The court is still in recess over Fordham versus Fordham. It involves a mother trying to get her son to take responsibility for the £1,020 he owes. It's torn the family apart and son Lee doesn't see why he should pay up. As always, you've been busy sending texts. If he borrowed it, he should pay it back, says Sal in Doncaster. It's simple as that. Parents must realise that kids take advantage of them and it's the love of them that keeps them together, says Jethro in Liverpool. Rachel in Bracknell, Lee, just pay the money back and move on. And Lisa from Scunthorpe says, uh, think Lee should pay his mum back. She brought him up after all. Um, Helen in Ermston says he should grow up and pay his mum back. She won't be around forever. Indeed, take a look at what happened earlier. This was not your money. No. But you spent it. Yeah. Got caught up, just lying, and then I started smoking drugs. What, you got through £700 in a month? You call Sandra your mum. She's your grandmother. Yeah, adopted mum, yeah. I Be brought you up since you were a year old. Is your mum to all intents and purposes? Yeah. yeah. He'd lied to me, saying that the money was in his bank account. Bought some, some drugs that I thought that I might be able to make the money back. But I smoked it all. OK, that's the end of recess. Let's get back to Fordham versus Fordham. Sandra Lee, can we resume the evidence there, please? Do you get this letter? Yeah. You've lost your job, you've lost your home, and your family. It's not the money, Lee, that you owe me, it's the lies. And you never once came and told me yourself you'd spent it all. I still love you, but I'm hurt so much. I wish you good luck, Mum. Did that make you cry? No. It should have. What have you got to say to your mother? Well, I said sorry. What else can I say? Well, how about get a job and pay her back? Trying. How did you lose your job in the first place? Not turning up. He was too lazy to get up because he'd been out smoking the night before. I wasn't too lazy. I, they changed my hours and I couldn't How get up. How many times did I come in and wake you every morning and leave to go to work? Oh, I couldn't get up. That was the thing. I couldn't get up. Why? It was an hour earlier. <sighs> what time are we talking about? Getting up at half six. And? I don't get up at half six. I get up at You seven. just don't do half six? No. I mean, what are you going to do with your life? I've got years ahead of me. Oh, but precisely. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. Try and find a job at the moment. Where does drugs get you, Lee? Huh? Where has it got you? Honestly. 
Where has it got you? It, drugs it ruin a family. It's ruined our relationship. But now I'm ashamed of you. That's your opinion, Mum. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just ashamed of you. Well, that's your opinion, isn't it? But doesn't that bother you? No. Are you serious? Yeah. I have an overwhelming temptation to come around the side of this bench and whack you around the head. Mm. This is your mother who's been, who brought you up and you don't care. Of course I care, but I don't care, care, care. Jackie, stand up. How does that make you feel? Guilty. She blames herself for yeah. me having them and having all the problems. But what have you done to deserve feeling guilty about that attitude? Um, because she shouldn't have to put up with it, really. No, of course she shouldn't. I've tried to commit suicide this year and last year. What? Yeah. You tried to commit suicide? Yeah, I've got, also got a handicapped daughter as well. Shouldn't you be helping instead of hindering? Well, I do help. You mean spending all the money, smoking... And drinking? When did that start? I'm a teenager, 16. Lee, of course you're a teenager. When did it start? I don't know. I started smoking and drinking when I was 15. You changed, Lee, the day yes. you were 16. I've always told you that. I've been to hell and back in two and a half years. None of my mates reckon I've changed, so... They no, like because they want they to like spend your money. Hand. They don't care, do they? Well, no, because they've got their own money, haven't they? So why were they helping you spend yours, then? Because they never had any money at the time. Exactly. You said that I ain't got no friends now, but yeah, but they are still there, aren't they? I still go around their house every day. So where have you been when you haven't got a roof over your head now? My mate's house. Exactly. Here, there, and <coughs> everywhere. Well, they're still friends because they're open. When me you out. were 16, Lee, and you were left home, where were you sleeping? On the streets. Exactly. Park bench in the back of a van, back of a lorry. Yeah. Is that what you want for yourself? Well, no, because I'm not going to end up like that. You're not doing very much about it. The two people who care about you most in this world are standing just to your right. Aren't they? Yeah. You don't seem to reciprocate that. You don't return their love and affection for you, do you? I do, but you don't... you can't see it. Well, tell us. Enlighten us. Well, what do we explain? Come on, what did you do with the ornament that you bought me? Yeah. You stood outside my kitchen window and said, you want this mum and bashed it on the windowsill, breaking it. And what no, did you do before, that was hurting And what did you do before that? I told you to get Stood out. Stood on my tin. A tin? Yeah. A tobacco tin that you'd had drugs in, Lee? Yeah, it's still my tin, not yours. But like I, I said to you myself, didn't I? I said, after, when Mum had kicked you out, that all you had to do was say, Mum, I've been an idiot, I've spent the money, I'm sorry, there would have been a bit of a to-do, and everything would have been all right. <laughs> you reckon? Do you not feel any obligation at all? to pay back the, that money which you should not have taken in the first place? No, not really. I mean, one of the reasons why I didn't want to pay it back as well was because she said that you can move back in if you pay the money. You don't pay the money, you ain't coming back. <laughs> I thought, all right then, I ain't paying the money, I ain't coming back, I don't care. I said that you couldn't move back in anyway no. if you were still on drugs, Lee. I'm not going to quit drugs. You do appreciate it's illegal, don't you? Yeah. You don't care about that either. No. <clears throat> Just help us, Lee. Is there anything you actually do care about? Yeah. What, where the next joint's coming from? No. Well, what do you care about, then? Myself and my family. You say you care about your family. What are you doing about that? Nothing, really. The starting point is to admit you were wrong. I, I'm not saying I went wrong. And apologise. And I already and have. mean it. I already have. I've said it enough times. Yeah. You, you said you had a diary with some entries It's in. also in here about holiday. On the Thursday morning, Lee came back into the apartment at half past four and woke everybody up. He was absolutely drunk, demanding his money that he had in the suitcase because he was going out with some friends that he'd met. In the end, I sat on a suitcase so that he couldn't get it out of the apartment. He really hurt my legs. I was bruised the next morning where he'd been yanking it so much. Eventually, I gave him his money and he ran out, meaning to say that he didn't have any money for the rest of his holidays. He was going to the bar buying drinks, not only for himself, but two people that he made friends with as well. Well, he put end. it on your room. He put it on our, well, it was the only room anyway that we had, and naturally, right. he didn't have any money to pay for it. So even after yeah. he'd effectively stolen the money that he was yeah. supposed to be saving. That's how soft I am, because I love him dearly. 
Don't you understand how that's hurting your mother? Yeah. No. From what you don't. Her body well, on. look at her. Oh, yeah, I can see she's crying. I ain't got to look at her to know that. Kevin, would you mind? Sorry. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I see you have entries in here relating to precisely what you've been telling us. When I took an overdose, the doctor told me that I should write things down. How often do you have a holiday? Um, only a once holiday. a year, for two weeks. And it's because I've got, uh, I've got arthritis mm. from head to toe and osteoporosis in my hips and my spine. <coughs> and the he helps for two weeks in a year and without pain. So I do enjoy my holidays. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I need to ask you anything else. Um, is there anything you want to say? As Apart from the fact I'm sorry, but I've already said that I don't know how many times. This lad has, by his own admission, abandoned his mother, his home, his job, his whole life. For what? Drugs. What it's done to him is to change him so that he doesn't care anymore. The effect of it on other people makes no difference to him. That's not for you and I. You have to determine whether or not what he has told you, that he believes if he doesn't go back, he doesn't have to pay, is a good enough excuse to justify him not paying. That decision, as always, is yours. All rice. Well, you can always rely on Judge Jerome to tell it like it is. Have you made your decision yet, though? Do you know who's in the right? If you think Sandra deserves the money she says she's owed, then vote for her by calling 090111001. Or if you think he's right in saying he doesn't, if he doesn't move back home, he doesn't have to pay, then vote for Lee by calling 090111001002. Remember, you can also vote by text. Just send C for claimant Sandra or D for dependent Lee to 87654. Are you still making your mind up? I'm sorry, I'm just ashamed of you. But doesn't that bother you? No. I've tried to commit suicide this year. And you don't care? Of course I care, but I don't care. Care, care. When well, no. you were 16, Lee, and you were left home, where were you sleeping? On the streets. I said that you couldn't move back in if you were still on drugs, Lee. I'm not going to quit drugs. What did you do with the ornament that you bought me? Yeah. You stood outside my kitchen window and said, you want this, Mum, and bashed it on the windowsill. I have an overwhelming temptation to come around the side of this bench and whack you around the head. And so your texts continue. Uh, Molly in Carmarthen says, I think Lee should grow up and pay his debts and respect his elders. Um, Denise in Brighton, you can't throw him out. It doesn't matter what he's done, he's still in your care. Very sympathetic. Claire in Coventry, my dad has lent me an awful lot more money than what she's talking about. Get over it. Um, what about up here in the public gallery? I'm thinking, do you have any sympathy for Lee or for Mum? Well, actually, I think Lee is so careless and so selfish. My message to him is start working and pay off his, your debt. Do you think he would ever take that on board, though? I'm not too sure. <laughs> he doesn't seem to take very much on board. He's Thanks. very careless. Thanks for that. What about from a young man's perspective? Well, Carol, um, I think Lee needs to realise that a mum's for life and uh, he's lucky that she's still willing to help him and willing to take him back, so I think he needs to do some growing up pretty quickly. The drugs are, are the, the big problem here, though, aren't they? He's, yeah. he's more in love with them than he is with anyone or anything else. That, that's true, Carol. So uh, he needs to get off them first, maybe? Yeah. Yep, but he's, he's lucky that his mum's willing to help Incredible. him get off the drugs. She's mm -hmm. a very patient woman. Yep, definitely. Thank you for that. OK, I've just heard your verdict is in. Let's rejoin Judge Jerome. All rise. Kevin, do I have a verdict in this case? We do, Your Honour. Thank you. Jury have voted in the case of Sandra and Lee Fordham and decided in favour of... Sandra, the claimant. I therefore give judgment to Sandra in the sum of £1,020. I suggest you take that and go on another holiday. Thank you. Lee, time's are running out for you. You need to get your priorities right. Drink and drugs isn't it. I can only hope that this experience has taught you to care, care. That's the judgment of this court. All rise.
And so Mom Sandra gets her £1,020 thanks to you, the jury out there voting overwhelmingly in favour of her 81%. I think we're going to bring them all out together. So you got your money. You're going to have a nice holiday on that and uh, look after yourself. Well, if I had the choice between Lee and the money, I would choose, choose Lee. Would you? Yeah. Lee, these people are incredibly patient and, you know, you're... From a viewer's point of view, you don't come across as a very nice person and you don't deserve this love. No. Do you feel any kind of love back? Yeah, of course I do. I'm a family. You just don't seem to show it, though. You look like you couldn't care less. That drugs are more important than anything. Uh, that's the way I am. Do you need maybe to change? No, I'm not going to change. That's, that's absolutely desperately sad. All these people out there, only 19% of, of the viewing, viewers voted for you just because they think you're a sad <laughs> character and you're coming across incredibly sad. Your mother and your grandmother here adore you, obviously. I have no idea why. Well, my friends like me, so... Well, they won't be around forever. No. Thanks, Thanks for coming you. in and telling your story. Look, give her a hug for goodness sake, man. <laughs> God, I give up. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you. Did I see a tear in his eye? Maybe not. Hopefully things will improve from them from now on. The next case is sadly also over money. This time it's a mother bringing her two children to the People's Court. She claims they owe her nearly £4,000 between them. But does she have herself to blame? That's up to you to decide. I've lost count how much my children owe me. It's time you took responsibility. Enough is enough. Mum, you know I struggle with the boys, but Gavin owes you more than I do. Mum, I know I owe you money, but you've got to stop nagging. Welcome back. Now meet Sharon Tucker, the mother who wants her two grown-up children to stop taking her for a ride and pay back the £3,845 she says is tearing the family apart. The daughter says her brother gets away with far worse. And if he isn't paying, then why should she? Again, it's up to you to decide who is right and who is wrong. The essential numbers will appear on the screen. The claimant is Sharon Tucker from Middlesex. She's fed up with being used by her two adult children as a bank, but feels emotionally incapable of saying no to them when they ask for money. She desperately wants a normal family and for them to grow up and fend for themselves. The defendants are Kerry and Gavin Davis. Kerry relies on her mum for childminding and owes at least £1,000, which she doesn't think is too bad. Gavin has borrowed thousands over the years, but still thinks it's okay because he's still Mummy's little soldier. All rise. The people's court this night nice session. Judge Jerome Lynch, Your Honour, this case is Sharon Tucker versus Curry and Gavin Davis. Both parties appearing before the people's court have agreed to tell the truth and to abide by the jury's verdict. You say these two are your children. Owe you some money. I lent Gavin £3,500 for a car which he wrote off. We lent Kerry £1,000 uh, also for a car which she's no longer got. Gavin's paid about £550 back over almost two years. And Kerry? She's paid uh, about £100 back, less than that, I think. Um, Gavin was supposed to pay £35 a week back. He started off okay. And then what happened? He just stopped paying. It's true? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? <laughs> it's true, I don't pay it back. Well, don't you think you should? Mm, yeah, but I've always got something else to pay for. I suppose it's easy, because it's me and Mo, I think I'll get away with it. But it's not fair on her, though, is it? I know, but... I suppose it's better to have your mum nagging it than the bank. What do you do? Fit windows. How much do you get paid? £500 a week. A family? <laughs> Two kids. And you borrowed some money from your mother? Yeah. In order to buy a car? And then you wrote it off? Yep. Was it not insured? Yeah, but I bought another car with the money that I got paid out on. Are you wealthy? <laughs> no. Where'd no, you get I'm your not. money from? I go to work. Yeah. I can't understand why you don't just pay it back, even if it's in smaller amounts. Well, sometimes I have the money, and then I just, on the way round to paying her, end up spending it. Do you smoke? No. Do you drink? No. Nope. Do you gamble? Yep. 
How much? Uh, some weeks, quite a lot. £200 a week. You gamble £200 <laughs> a week? Yeah. Do you notice? Know I didn't realise it's that much. What He's always been that? a gambler. What do you think about that? It's heartbreaking, really. Does your partner know you gamble £200 a week? No. She does now. She does now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do about that? I don't know. Kerry. Hello. You've been smiling while your brother's been <laughs> confessing. <laughs> Shocked. You're not an awful lot better yourself, though, are you? No. I don't gamble, though. £900 you owe your mother. Yeah. You borrowed money from her to buy a car. But what happened is, um, the car I had, the head gasket went, which is between four and six hundred pounds. I don't care. So I had to scrap the car. I don't care. I need to pay for two cars now, and I can't afford to pay for any of them. You see, you bought the car mm. on money that your mother loaned yeah, you. I know. She's too soft. Oh, it's her fault. No, but it's... We make her feel guilty. She lends it to us and we really know we can't afford to pay it back. How old are you? 30 this year. 28. You're 30 this year. Mm. And how old are you? 28. You know, you're, you're no longer children, are you? I think we've been spoiled, I suppose, and then we just think it could continue all the time, but obviously it can't. Kerry doesn't gamble, but she likes having her nails done. Do and, you? Her, and her hair done. So you have your nails done, how much does that cost? £35. And your hair? How often do you have it done? Not often enough, it's really dry at the moment, it needs doing. <laughs> well, it's just a bottle of conditioner, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, you spend £35 on having your nails done, do them yourself and give your mother 35 quid. They ping off though for doing myself. And neither of you are making any real effort to give her her money back. I think we take Even if it's in small sums. Mm. What effect has that had on your relationship? It's bad, really bad. We don't see each other. You're avoiding it because you're embarrassed. Yeah. He's worse. We used to be really close. Yes. We're not anymore. And how about the relationship between you and your husband? Mm -hmm. It's terrible because every week he says, and any money from Kerry, Gavin? Because we've, we've got two children each. It's second time round for us. And it just always seems to be my kids need the help. But I don't want well, to Well, I see spoke to him earlier on today, actually. Who? Your husband. Did you? Yes, I did. Let's hear from him, shall we? Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi, David. You're uh, married to Sharon. Yeah. How has it affected Sharon, the fact that she keeps giving out money to her uh, children? I think she feels as though it's a bit of a battlefield between, like, the four of us. Gavin won some money a while ago, and I thought I would get some money back but I didn't get an actual penny. How much did he win? About a thousand pounds. Really? Yeah. David, really, this is uh, your one chance to make it clear to both Gavin and Kerry what it is that, it's, that their failure to repay what they've borrowed is yeah. doing to, to Sharon, your wife. The problem is as well, we got in Sharon, she, she had a, quite a rough upbringing and she wants to feel like a mother to them, even at the age they are, and I said, well, you know, time has come when Kerry's got children of her own, and Gavin's got children, you know, that it should yeah. be let go as such. We, we should uh, just enjoy the rest of our life together without worrying about arguing about children. So what do you say to Sharon, then, about um, her continuingly, continuing to loan money to Kerry and Gavin? Well, I mean, I don't particularly like it, but she does it, and... I don't hear about it until sort of later on when it's been and gone sort of thing. <laughs> what I'm saying, because Sharon's very, very fiery and I just like a peaceful life. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? Well, you've heard what he has to say. You won a thousand pounds. Yeah, well, a bit more than that. Where was it? <laughs> Bought a new TV. Well, didn't you give her even anything out of this winning? Um. Maybe 80 quid, something like that. Did you know he'd won all this money? No, I didn't. I wondered where the telly come from. You two have really got to get your priorities right, haven't you? Mm, definitely. Is there anything you want to say in your defence? I'm really sorry for taking advantage. 
But my mum's really soft and maybe she needs to say no sometimes. The relationship between you has, has changed. Mm, badly, yeah. How has it changed? My mum has my little boy um, a couple of times a week and I don't really see her. I just, the boy, baby gets dropped around and she drops him back but we don't really have conversation. I know that sounds bad but I think we thought she could afford it. We've borrowed money and we didn't actually realise that she was struggling as much. Your mother's standing there on her own in tears. And you can't even bear to look at her, can you, Gavin? No. Is there anything you want to say in your own defence? I'm not going to ask to borrow any more money to put my mum in, in the position to have to either say no and feel bad or say yes and then not be paid back. I suppose now that I've seen her and how she is, it's made me feel really bad about it. You got something you want to say to your mum? Yeah, I'm really sorry, Mum. we give her a cuddle or not? I think you better have. You all right? If you abuse those who love you the most and take advantage of that love, you risk wounding them, or worse still, losing them altogether. These two have finally realized that, and it's not too late. But the question you have to decide is this, isn't it? Has Sharon allowed them to feel that they can take advantage of her? Or have they taken advantage of her love unreasonably? That decision, as always, is yours. All rise. Well, powerful stuff there. Have you just witnessed a family reunited? I don't know. So do you think Sharon, the claimant, should get the money her son and daughter owe her? Call 090-111-0001. Maybe you think Sharon has brought this on herself and co-defendants Kerry and Gavin owe her nothing. If, if so, then vote for them by calling 090-111-0002. But if you're still swithering over which way to vote, take a look at this. I lent Gavin £3,500. He just stopped paying. The head gasket went, which is between four and six hundred pounds. I don't care. So I had to scrap the car. I don't care. You gamble <laughs> two hundred pounds a week. It's heartbreaking, really. We used to be really close. Yes. We're not anymore. But my mum's really soft, and maybe she needs to say no sometimes. Your mother's standing there on her own in tears. And you can't even bear to look at her, can you? And your texts are very interesting on this one. These kids make my blood boil. I'm only 17 myself. I would never dream of treating my mum like that. They're going nowhere in life, says Laura in Mansfield. I don't think it's funny. Your parents have feelings too. Grow up, kids, says Trace in Sheffield. I like the kids bit. Big kids. These kids are parasites. If you owe it, pay it, says Claire in Tyne and Weir. And I think that Gavin should stop gambling and pay his mum back and use the rest of the money for his children, says Kylie in uh, Leeds. She should be ashamed of her loser kids. The only way to help them is to stop bailing them out. They need to grow up, says Helen in Liverpool. I wonder, have you ever borrowed money off your mother? Um, yeah. Have you paid it back? I have, yeah. <laughs> what do you think watching all this? Um, I think they should definitely pay it back and they should stop gambling. Cause for them both to have kids and be able to afford to gamble that much money and not be able to give it back to their, their mums. Seems amazing, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. How about you, sir? Uh, I think they should pay it back. Um, obviously, they can if they're spending a grand on a telly. Um, aye. They've got the money there. Aye. They've just not got the priorities right. That's right, aye. Thanks for that. Okay, that's the verdict in. Let's rejoin Judge Jerome to find out what you've decided. All rise. Kevin, do we have a verdict in this case? Thank you, Your Honour. Thank you. The case of Sharon Tucker and Kerry and Gavin Davis, the jury have voted and decided in favour of. Unsurprisingly, overwhelmingly in favour of the claimant, Sharon Tucker. I therefore award Sharon £3,845, being that which both Kerry and Gavin owe. Sharon, I hope you and David will be able to use that money uh, in the way in which you originally intended. Thank you. Kerry and Gavin, you two, I think, actually realised for the first time what you've actually been doing to your mother. You now know. Don't do it again. That is the 
decision of this court. Case is dismissed. All rise. Well done, everyone out there. Overwhelmingly, as Judge Jerome said, 96% in favour of mum. Um, and I think we're going to bring them all out together, so brace yourself. <laughs> How'd you come? So you got some money back, oh, which I'm is just, good news. It really is. I'm really pleased. At least now my children and I can have a proper... It's terrible <laughs> to see you so upset. Oh, is you two have been called a shameless <laughs> pair of parasites. Absolute shame on you for coming in here and standing there, oh, no. admitting these terrible things. Why have you lost touch with her over something that's blatantly your fault? Yeah, I think it's just like you owe money, it's hard because like we know we owe it, mum sort of... You'd rather avoid it. her oh, I'll try and lose avoid, this yeah. wonderful woman who quite frankly doesn't look like she's had kids, never mind you <laughs> <No>. two big lumps. <laughs> <laughs> You're the hideous children, <laughs> I really uh, take my breath away. I'm, I'm pleased that it turned out in my mum's favour now, so hopefully we can all like, get our relationship back together because okay. we were really close before. Okay, money shouldn't come between no, you if you've been close it won't, before, it won't again. Especially if it's your fault. You're, you're Problem to sort out. You're very quiet well, yeah. there, Keith. Um, yeah. Well, sort it's out. Worse than me. Not, well, you see, you can't pass it. You're both as bad as each other. Sort, actually, sort it I've out. I've actually seen how bad I've been. You've been. Yeah. Give her a hug. She's so lovely. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Okay, off you go. And Thank thanks you. for coming in and telling your story. Right, one more case left today, which has got work colleagues Terry Frisbee and Dion Murrell hot under the collar. Terry claims that designer Dion is losing the company business because of the way he dresses. Dion claims it's all a question of style and he should be allowed to dress the way he wants. Dion needs to realise he's not Graham Norton. His flamboyant dress sense is costing me money. The way I dress is just who I am. Just because I don't wear boring suits like Terry, I'm not in the wrong. Welcome back to the People's Court. Our final case of the day is about to start. Terry Frisbee says the work clothes his colleague Dion Murrell turns up wearing is quite frankly a criminal offence. He wants him to smarten up his act. Designer Dion, on the other hand, thinks he's got style. The claimant is Terry Frisbee from London. He says his workmate Dion Murrell dresses like a clown. Terry believes Dion's fashion statements make him a laughing stock and that he's failing to impress important clients. He wants Dion to dress like everyone else in a business suit. The defendant is Dion Murrell. He says proudly he's renowned in the office furniture industry for his loud shirts. He finds normal business attire boring and likes to make a statement with the way he dresses. All rise. People's Court is now in session. Judge Jerome Lynch, Your Honour, this case is Terry Frisbee versus Dion Murrell. Both parties appearing before the People's Court have agreed to tell the truth and to abide by the jury's verdict. Terry, why have you brought Dion here? I think that his uh, dress sense is overly flamboyant and it's costing me money when I take him to visit and meet with clients. Why, do you have to pay for his shirts? No, I, make, I own commission from sales, and uh, if I come off looking less professional than, uh, than my competition, I'm in, I'm in danger of losing that job. What do you say about that? I think it's a joke. What are you serious, apparently? Oh, you I'm are serious, serious, aren't you? I'm deadly serious. I don't think I'm flamboyant at all. <laughs> Just, uh, Excuse me, Judge, would you like a pair of sunglasses while he, uh, while he re reiterates that statement? Just open your jacket a minute, please. It's not that bright. It's not that bright. I have had uh, colourblind tests done on him, and he's not colourblind, so uh, he, he actually knows what he's wearing. Though I have to say, brown shoes with a dark suit don't go for me either, I have to say. Seriously, well, this, this has been uh, professionally approved by uh, a fashion consultant. They bought this outfit for me uh, for, for a business yeah, meeting. Must have been Trini or something. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I look after designers and architects. But these people are not, that we're meeting with are not always designers and architects. He needs to be able to uh, portray a nice professional business manner to the MDs and to the other purchasers involved. Yeah, but you look boring. <laughs> I look boring. <laughs> yeah. What do we think? <laughs> it's boring. This is your boss here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, it's uh, Paul Ellis, is it that is right? It is indeed. Would you, would you mind standing sure. up, Paul? Um, now, you're the governor. Yes. I see you wearing brown shoes as well. There's obviously something sketching, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure it's something I want to get. What do you say about... Uh, 
Dion's well, shirts? I think the problem with Dion is it's not just about shirts. I think people are focusing on his shirt. Um, I think it's uh, really, you probably notice he's wearing Alibaba shoes today, which actually curl up at the front and point to the sky. He has, um, he went away recently for a, for a week and has come back with a certain appendage on his chin. Um, the shirt that he's wearing What's wrong today, with appendages on the chin? Um, <laughs> right it depends, it depends whose chin it's on, really, doesn't it? I think we've got some pictures of your shirts. You were modelling a little earlier. Shall we have a look? I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. And I am too sexy for Milan. Too sexy for Milan. New York and Japan. Oh, lovely. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I just think you know, clients see guys like them all the time and see white shirts and blue shirts and blue ties and white ties and they just get bored of it. So I just thought I'd bring a bit of colour to their lives, Judge. There is a serious point though, isn't there? Are you going to lose business as a result depending on the sorts of people you're meeting? I don't think so. <laughs> we could cite cases, but we won't, where Terry's lost money because of, of Dion's dress sense. I don't know. I mean, if I, was, if I was talking to a designer, I'd want him to be a little different, a little more extravagant. Very rarely do you walk into a, a major architectural firm and you see people that look like extras from Hawaii Five O. So it's... Um, know, but that's why we end up with square blocks in, the, in my, our uh, my point is environment. A, can I just say, Judge, I do get remembered by the clients. Yeah, sadly, if we ever go back for repeat business, they don't let us in because they remember him. <laughs> You're the governor. Yeah. If you don't like it, sack him. He has undoubted talents. If you put him in a room on the telephone where no one can see him, he's a very, very oh. capable person. Do you think, though, that there may have been other occasions when he has won you the business? Absolutely. And if that's so, you know, he's as much an asset as a liability. Yeah, I know, I agree. But I'm, what I'm asking for him, for him to do is to to, you know, compromise occasionally. And when I say, look, we need to dress corporate for this meeting because we're only meeting the MD and the facilities manager, your shirt is not going to, to work in this atmosphere. And, and he still turns up wearing his velvet vampire coat. You know, it's... You've got a velvet vampire coat? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a vampire. <laughs> but he would it say it's velvet, velvet. But it's not vampire. I haven't got a somber shirt in my wardrobe, whether it's going out on Friday night, Saturday night, on the weekends, or at work, just it's the way I am. You don't own a white shirt, for example? I don't have a white shirt at all. Not I reckon one. you've got a white one, that big frilly pirate type thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's frilly. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you lose? Yes. If the jury vote against you, what are you going to do? Well, apparently I've been told I've got to wear a white shirt for a couple of weeks with a blue tie. <laughs> What's the suit, though? I don't know, probably just a plain black one. You, you're agreeing to do that, are you? Well, my hands behind, the tie behind my back, I'll give it a go, yeah, but... Oh, come on, we need to have something. Yes. Oh, he's pushing me, isn't he? Mm. Um, okay, maybe, yes, okay. Now, what are you going to do? What do you think I should do? I think you should wear a loud shirt. I couldn't wear his, they're too big. <laughs> we'll get you one, don't you worry about that. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, I'll wear a loud shirt. Um, Two weeks, no tie. But if I have important client meetings... You can wear brown meetings, shoes. If I have important client meetings, I'm going to have to change into to proper corporate wear. I that's not fair, Judge. For two weeks, I will wear a ridiculous shirt when I'm in the office without clients. That's fair enough. His livelihood depends on it. That's a deal? Um, yeah. <laughs> I see you both shake hands on that deal, please, right now. All right, done. I believe style is something you either have or you do not have. Those who've got it can generally carry it off. If you were going to meet the person in charge of design at some corporate meeting. You might expect to see a more flamboyant individual than someone in a boring pinstripe suit. You have to decide, don't you, whether you go with Terry and Paul of the corporate image, or on the other hand, Dion and his style. That decision is yours. All right. Okay, it's down to you now to decide whose fashion statement is going to win. Do you think that the claimant Terry is right in trying to make Dion conform to the corporate image and dress more conservatively? If you do, then call 090-1111-0001. Or if you think Terry should go with the flow and let Dion dress the way he wants, then vote for Dion by calling 090 Take a look at this before making up your mind.
His uh, dress sense is overly flamboyant, and it's costing me money when I take him to visit and meet with clients. Just open your jacket a minute, please. It's not that bright. I have had uh, colorblind tests done on him, and he's not colorblind, so uh, he actually knows what he's wearing. Yeah, but you look boring. <laughs> I look boring. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> it looks boring. Terry's lost money because of, of Dion's dress sense. You're the governor. Yeah. If you don't like it, sack him. He has undoubted talents. If you put him in a room on a telephone where no one can see him, he's a very, very oh. capable person. That's what I am. And Donna and Surrey says Terry needs to get out more. If there's nothing in his contract to say he has to dress a certain way, then tough. Good luck, Dion, she says. Uh, Jamie, uh, Georgie Jamie in Newcastle says let him wear what he wants. He looks smart enough today. It's just a bright shirt. Um, Liz, in our bros, as long as the work is getting done, does it really matter what Dion wears? And uh, Rue in Newton Abbott, I think more people should dress with bright colours and individualism should be praised. Do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, I think it's probably a breach in his human rights if he's told and dictated what to wear. So I think he should wear what he likes. Do you think he looks that bad? No, not at all. <laughs> Can you look at this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're obviously an individual too. Good thank you. for you. How about you, man? What do you reckon? Do you think he looks good? I think he should be allowed to wear what he wants and show off how individual he is and different from other people. But it's not like he's wearing jeans or anything, he's, you know, which I could understand them maybe no. thinking, well, it's too scruffy, but it's smart. Yeah, yeah? I think it is. You like what he looks like? Yeah, I think it's nice. Oh. Prefer to the other guy? Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. Right, you've returned your verdict. Time to find out what it is. All right. Kevin, we have a verdict in this case. We do, Your Honour. Thank you very much. In the case of Terry Frisbee and Dion Murrell, the jury have voted and decided in favour of... The defendant, Dion Murrell. Neither party sought any financial compensation, so there is no award. For my part, I am absolutely delighted that the defendant has won in this case. There are far too many boring people, most of whom I have to say I work with normally, but never mind. Uh, I have noticed, however, a little bit of style oozing out of uh, Terry there with those shoes. It clearly wasn't his own idea. It came from a stylist, so um, I should uh, advise you to try and go back again. Um, a deal's a deal, though. And uh, you promised that you would wear a shirt. Would you mind? Certainly, Your Honor. I've got you one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You've got that for the next two weeks. <laughs> That's the judgment of this court. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Oh, I love it when Jerome issues fashion advice. Always a, a vote for um, individualism there. Well done, all of you out there. 83% voting in favour of the defendant. And poor old Terry's going to have to wear that shirt, which is really pretty bad. <laughs> now, you see, you should have kept your mouth shut. You've got the hair going, you've got the shoes going, and now you're going to have to wear the shirt. Do I get a parrot to go with it? <laughs> yeah, he's here. That's OK. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Judge Jerome thinks that he is stylish. That must be... I'm sorry, I think he's stylish. <sighs> I can't believe that no one's questioned Judge your own style. That's I true. Think, okay, I, I, I kind of grant you that There's another case one. waiting there in the wings, isn't there, for crying out I agree that. But he's a good-looking guy. He looks smart. I think he looks great. Yeah, there's a PVC cat suit underneath that robe. Well, all the, all the text, you know. And I don't mean to roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, <laughs> love the shirt when you finish. Happy boy. <laughs> that, that, even you wouldn't wear that shirt, would you? Mm, maybe not. Maybe not. It's not one of yours, one is of it? old ones. No, no, definitely not. That's okay. Well, a huge number of people out there thought you were a pretty cool dude and uh, liked what you are wearing. And you know, you could be starting a whole new career after this. Who Stuff knows? them. Yeah, Never mind exactly. office furniture Job malarkey. Office. Party <laughs> dull for you. <laughs> we wish you all the best in the future, Thanks, and I'm sure uh, sales will rocket. Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks, okay, Cheers. off you go. Right, <laughs> right, don't you dare sack him. Right, that's almost it for today. Sadly, we've only got one more session in people's court left before this series comes to an end. But don't forget to book a seat and make your final votes. Gorgeous shirt. I'm in a hurry. So I love I it. You're, not, you're leaving, are you, darling? You're leaving. Now, before we go today, I have to say there is one gentleman who's been texting in on every case we've done today. His name is John from Wolves, and John says, uh, Will you marry me, Sarah Harris? Oh. Say yes. Say yes. See, we do Excellent. it all in this programme. <laughs> now, uh, you are back tomorrow along um, with the lovely Rhonda. Yes.
Yes, the two of us together. <laughs> I'm not sure you should wear the shirt. I won't be. This <laughs> go is my for the robes. Go for the robes with nothing underneath. That steady, would be good. steady. <laughs> <laughs> Only in private, Carol. Only in private. Any idea uh, what uh, what the cases are for tomorrow? Yeah, warring uh, family, I'm afraid. Again? Yeah. It's amazing how many people Isn't are it? in this situation. It's quite extraordinary. Is there money involved? Yeah, of course. Of course. It seems to be the case. How did I guess? It. That's one thing I've learned, I have to say, over this uh, yeah. six week period. Don't lend family money and, uh, and stick by your guns. You're almost better off giving it to them, aren't you? You're know, <laughs> never going to get it back, are you? <laughs> Absolutely. OK, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, sure. That's it for today. Remember, it's the last session of the People's Court tomorrow, but for now. Stay with ITV Day and this morning while I go and slag off Jerome about his <laughs> 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 <laughs>